Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. For this question, we're looking at the very last question in the New South Wales Extension 2 HSC exam that was just sat uh, earlier this week. So in theory, the last question on these exams is typically the hardest, um, at least in theory. So what we're really looking at is the hardest math question that was um, pitted against students this year. So I thought, well, why not have a go at, at um, working it out and see what it looks like? Uh, interestingly, back when I did the HSC, um, uh, for my extension to exam, I went and had a look and interestingly, um, my last question was also on integration. So I'm not sure what that says, but um, at least two decades ago, uh, the hardest question was integration. And here we are in 2020 also faced with an integration question as the very last question of the four unit exam. So, um, I'll just read through it. We're, we're told that we're given i n is equal to the integral from zero to pi on two of sine two n plus one two theta d theta for n equals zero, one, and so on. Part one, we're asked to prove that i n is equal to two n on two n plus one i to the n minus one for n greater than or equal to one. So essentially we're being asked to prove a recurrence uh, relationship here. Then for part two, we're asked to deduce that i n is equal to two to the two n n factorial squared, all divided by two n plus one factorial. Then we're given a new um, integral j n, which is equal to the integral from zero to one of x to the n one minus x to the n dx. And then part three is using the result of part two or otherwise show that j n equals n factorial squared on two n plus one factorial. And then part four is to prove that two to the power of n, n factorial squared is less than or equal to two n plus one factorial. So um, given the, the question's broken into four parts, I'll, I'll create a separate video for each part. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll just focus on proving part one. So to start, um, we'll, we'll just write out the integral we're given. So we're given i n is equal to the integral from zero to pi on two of sine two n plus one two theta d theta. And that's for n is equal to zero, one, and so on. We're being asked to prove that i n has this recurrence relationship where we, we have two n on two n plus one i of n minus one. And that's for n greater than or equal to 1. And hopefully it makes sense why we have to do that because if for i n we can only start from 0, then if we're going to have something, something with i n minus 1, we have to start from 1 since we can't put a 0 in there and have i to the negative 1 because that's not available. So, so that part is kind of almost given. So what we really need to do is find a way to show this, this recurrence relationship. And um, I think step one, a natural step one, is to break this sign to the 2n plus 1 into two separate bits, and then we'll use integration by parts. So, so what we know is i n is equal to 0 to pi on 2 of sine 2n 2 theta times sine two theta, d theta. So all I've done is expanded this two n plus one exponent into, into its separate bits. So it's basically a sine one there. Now what I want to do is use the identity, what, what we know, the integration by parts identity of the integ integral of u v dash is equal to u v minus the integral of v u dash. So what I want to do is define each of these um, so that I can get it in this format. So I'll let u equal um, uh, sine 2n of 2 theta and I'll let um, v dash be the sine of 2 theta. So given I've got this integral in the format u v dash, if I can find v, and if I can find u dash, 
I can then use this integration by parts to hopefully get to the result we're looking for. So um, step one is I need to find, um, I'll start by finding u dash. So u dash will be equal to the derivative of this sine 2n um, of 2 theta. So we'll have to use the chain rule here. So we'll get uh, 2n sine 2n minus 1 2 theta times um, we'll get co uh, 2 cos of 2 theta and that's just using the chain rule which I, I think at a four unit level you'd have to just assume that everyone's going to be able to apply the chain rule pretty easily. So that's just going to come to 4n sine 2n minus 1 2 theta of cos 2 theta. Uh, now for v, so v will be the integral of sine 2 theta d theta. Um, so how I think about this is let's just let k equal 2 theta, this bit here on the inside. So we get dk d theta equals 2. So dk is equal to 2 d theta, or in other words, d theta equals dk on 2. So now I can just sub those in. So I get sine of k. And instead of d theta, I write dk on 2. So that gives me, I can bring out the half, so I'll get a half integral of sine k dk, which is a half times the integral of sine would be negative cos k. Um, I'll put the k back in, so we'll get negative a half of cos 2 theta. So now I've got all the ingredients I need. I've got my u. I've got my v dash, I've got um, my v, and I've got my u dash. So I can now fill, fill all this out. Um, I might turn over the page for this. So, so really what we've got is i n will be equal to, we'll do the first bit, we'll do u times v, so we'll get sine 2 and 2 theta. times v, which will be a negative a half cos 2 theta. That's between 0 and pi on 2. And then from that we subtract the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of v times u dash. So v is negative a half cos 2 theta. times u dash, which is 4n sine 2n minus 1, 2 theta, times cos 2 theta, d theta. Now, before I focus on this second integral and working that out, um, if we think about what we're going to get in this first part, um, inserting pi on 2 into sine 2 and 2 theta, we're going to have uh, some power of sine pi, and we know sine pi will equal 0, and the same thing with sine of 0, um, sine 0 equals 0. So multiplying 0 by anything gives us 0, so this whole first part is going to evaluate to 0. So really what we then get is that i n is equal to, and we can focus on this second integral, um, and I can kind of bring out the non-theta bits, so the 4n and the half. So we get negative, negative a half times 4n, which will be positive 2n, times the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of cos 2 theta sine 2n minus 1, 2 theta, and then another cos 2 theta, d theta. So really that's 2n times the integral from 0 to pi on 2 
of sine 2n minus 1 2 theta cos squared 2 theta 2 theta and that I can take the identity um, uh, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1 Therefore, cos squared x is 1 minus sine squared x, so I can insert that and get everything in terms of sine. So that's going to be equal to 2n integral from 0 to pi on 2 of sine 2n minus 1, 2 theta times 1 minus um, sine squared, 2 theta, d theta. And I can now... Uh, expand this out so we'll get 2n times the integral from 0 to pi on 2 of sine 2n minus 1 2 theta uh, minus and this the exponents will become 2n minus 1 plus 2 which will be 2n plus 1 so sine 2n plus 1 2 theta d theta and what I'll do is put these into separate integrals. So we'll get equal 2n integral from 0 to pi on 2 of sine 2n minus 1, 2 theta, minus 2n of the integral of 0 to pi on 2 of sine 2n plus 1, 2 theta, d theta. And it's from here that we can start to get everything back into i n and i n minus 1 because this integral here is our original definition of i n sine of 2 n plus 1 2 theta d theta so that's i n and this integral here is also in that same format but we've essentially inserted n minus 1 in, in spot of n. So if, if you look at our original integral, if I put n minus 1 in there, you get 2n minus 2 plus 1, or in other words, 2n minus 1, which is what that is. So this is i to the n minus 1. So what we've got really is i n is equal to 2n of i n minus 1 minus 2n of i n. So I can bring this over and we get um, 2n plus 1 of i n is equal to 2n of i n minus 1. And the last step is just to divide both sides. So you get 2n on 2n plus 1 times i to the n minus 1. And that's going to be for n greater than or equal to 1 for the reasons I explained earlier. So that is what we were being asked to prove. So that's part one of the question and at the end of the day we just had to use um, this integration by parts which you probably should commit to memory but um, I think would probably have been in the formula list at the end of the exam anyway um, just in case you hadn't memorized that but I would say you probably want to memorize it anyway. Um, we use the chain rule um, substitution technique. It's just a whole bunch of integration and differentiation techniques that we've had to apply. Um, none of it, I would say, required any um, particular moments of imagination or creativity. I think um, um, once you kind of realize to break this up into its two bits, I think integration by parts really just naturally should jump out at you. So, so far this question, I think, Pretty tame um, in terms of a final question on a four unit math exam. I mean, plenty of room to make mistakes, but um, I think, um, you know, as long as you're careful and methodical, you will get there. So that's the first part. I'll um, now move on to part two in the next video. Uh, tick boom.